Last video, we defined eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and then and we derived this expression, which is this expression just manipulated a little bit algebraically. And then this is what we're going to use eventually to compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues um, given some matrix A. And I said I'd do that in this video, but instead what I want to do is go over some geometric interpretations of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, um, where some transformation is described to you geometrically, and then just from thinking about the transformation, you can come up with the eigenvectors and stuff. Um, so let's do that instead. Really quick, I want to give you this nugget of information. Uh, the zero vector is never an eigenvector. Um, and I guess that's misleading because I guess technically it's an eigenvector, but it's a tr it's it, we call it trivial. Like it it's so it's like dumb to think about the zero vector as an eigenvector because, of course, like if you plug in up here zero vector for v, you get a times zero equals lambda times zero. You get zero times zero no matter what you pick for lambda. So, so it's like zero vector has infinitely many eigenvalues. That that doesn't really make sense, right? So we say the zero vector, never write that down as an eigenvector of some matrix because that's trivial and we don't like to talk about it. Paradoxically though, um, lambda equals zero is a valid eigenvalue. So that's interesting. If you input a vector V, you multiply it by A, and then you get zero times V, you get the zero vector out, that's pretty useful information, right? And then just to check that these are equivalent, if you plug in lambda equals zero, you get A times V, equals the zero vector, right? Lambda equals zero. And over here, if you plug in lambda equals zero, you get a times v equals zero as well. Um, so I don't know why I shared that, but it just is proof that these are equivalent, I guess. So bottom line, zero is never an eigenvector, but lambda equals zero could be an eigenvalue. And we're gonna see that in these transformations. So let's consider the first one. Let's say we have some projection transformation where the transformation is projection onto the x-axis. So classic, right? So let's look. Here's our xy plane. And let's think, what could the eigenvectors be? So we don't have to find the standard matrix of this and go through using this, which I haven't told you how to do yet. But you can just do this by thinking about the geometric interpretation. So this vector gets projected onto the x-axis here, right? So here's the input, here's the output. Is this an eigenvector? If it's an eigenvector, it would be, um, it would just be scaled as a result of the transformation. And you can see that's not true because it gets rotated a little bit. But what about this guy here? I don't know, some vector already on the x-axis. Well, when you apply the transformation to this, it doesn't change, right? So if this is v, when you apply this transformation projection onto the x-axis, say this has standard matrix A, if you do A times v, you just get the same vector v, you just get v. So you could think of this as having an eigenvalue of one, right? So any vector on the x-axis isn't gonna change as a result of this projection. And so you could think of any vector on the x-axis as being an eigenvector with eigenvalue one, okay? So the collection of all eigen, the collection of vectors that are eigenvectors with the same eigenvalue, we call that the eigenspace. So in this case, the one eigenspace, meaning the collection of all eigenvectors with eigenvalue one, the one eigenspace for this transformation equals the x-axis. So eigenspaces are gonna be subspaces, right? The one eigenspace, again, is the collection of all vectors that as a result of this transformation just get scaled by one, right? That one eigenspace, this here is always going to be your lambda. It's a collection of eigenvectors with eigenvalue one. Are there any other eigenvectors you can think of in this transformation besides the vectors on the x-axis? Well, what if you had this guy? What if you had a vector on the y-axis? Then when it gets um, when it gets projected onto the x-axis, what happens to it? Well, it loses its y component, and it just goes right here to the origin. Right? So any vector on the y-axis that gets that goes through this transformation gets shrunken down to nothing. And so if this, if you call this vector x, this guy on the y-axis, then a times x equals what? The zero vector, right? Because when you project something on the y-axis onto the x-axis, 
it just turns into the zero vector. So you could think of that as zero times x, right? So this follows the form of an eigenvector. So this x from the y-axis is an eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. So, but and that would be the case for any vector on the y-axis. Any vector I pick here that's straight up and down when it gets projected onto the x-axis just gets shrunk to zero. So they're all eigenvectors with eigenvalue zero. So you could say in this case where the the matrix is a standard matrix of some transformation that projects onto the x-axis, the zero eigenspace for this transformation or for this standard matrix, the zero eigenspace is the y-axis. Meaning, all the vectors on the y-axis are eigenvectors with eigenvalue 0. Remember, like I said, this 0 eigenspace, this 0 is the lambda. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Let's do another transformation. Let's say we have one that's reflection over the line. Um, let's just say reflection over the y-axis. Okay, try to think about just geometrically try to determine what are the eigenvectors and their corresponding eigenvalues. Well, if we do this guy, some arbitrary vector, we reflect it over the y-axis, what does that look like? It goes to here, right? And is that an eigenvector? No, right? Because it kind of gets knocked off its span. Its span is this line, and if it were an eigenvector, it would its uh, output, its corresponding output, as you run it through this transformation, would also lie on that line. It would just be scaled by some number. But as you can see, that's not the case because when you input this vector, it gets flipped all the way over to here. And that's not scaling it by some number. So this is not an eigenvector. But what would be an eigenvector? Well, think about any vector on the y-axis. So like this guy down here. When we input this into the transformation that reflects over the y-axis, what happens to it? Nothing, right? It stays in place. So any vector on the y-axis is going to have that property, right? So uh, the standard matrix of this transformation times a vector on the y-axis doesn't change the vector. So if we call this v, then doing a times v just equals 1 times v. It doesn't change it. And so the y-axis is the what eigenspace? It's the one eigenspace. So one eigenspace of, we could say t, we could call this transformation t of x that reflects over the y-axis. The one eigenspace of t is the y-axis. Again, meaning the collection of all vectors, right? Eigenspace is a subspace. The collection of all vectors that are eigenvectors of t that have eigenvalue 1 is the y-axis. So we, so we have like special terms that we call it the one eigenspace. Um, are there any other eigenvectors? Well, yeah, anything on the x-axis, maybe you've thought of it already. This guy, some vector x, I don't know. When it gets the when it gets inputted to this transformation and gets reflected over the y-axis, what happens to it? It goes over here, right? And so you can see that when you input x, the output is negative 1 times x. So a times x is negative 1 times x because we're just reflecting it over the... We're just reflecting it over the y-axis. So you could say the negative 1 eigenspace of t of this transformation, or you could say of the standard matrix of this transformation, if you called that standard matrix A or something, you could say the negative 1 eigenspace of A is the x-axis. So there you have it. Hopefully this... Uh, helps you understand like geometrically how you can think of eigenvectors and eigenvalues and uh, hopefully now you understand what an eigenspace is. In the next video I promise now we're gonna learn how to compute the eigenvectors and eigenvalues when you're just given some matrix like one two three four. It says here's a matrix it says here's a matrix find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of it. Well we're gonna use this equation up here to do that. So that'll be the next video.